Now it's time for our next video on chemical weapons and how to protect yourself from them and last time we covered pesticide so naturally today we're moving on to the G agents now what are the G agents? They were the first lot of nerve agents developed developed by Germany prior to World War II and during World War II called the G agents because the Americans named them after the Germans when they had the data on them after the Second World War had finished so G agents for German agents Later on there would be the venomous agents that start with V, most famous being VX, but we're not looking at those today. We're going to look at the German agents, the first lot of nerve agents. Now, the first one discovered was Tabun in 1936, known as GA. Now, Tabun was incredibly deadly compared to the chemical weapons of World War I. So, in World War I, the most deadly chemical weapon of the lot was phosgene. And as you would have seen in my phosgene video, um, inhaling that can be you know, a very slow, painful way to die. And it was very effective, but if you had a mask on, you'd be relatively safe. Obviously, it's probably not nice if it comes into contact with your skin, but you know, it kills through inhalation. Um, and you still need quite a lot to you know, inhale to kill you, nowhere near as much as something like chlorine. But you know, it's relatively, you still need to inhale a fair bit. Now... Obviously, mustard gas as well in World War I could damage your skin, and lewisite could damage the skin and cause blood poisoning through the skin. Um, but both mustard and lewisite, you know, weren't that dangerous if inhaled. They were more, you know, wound people horribly kind of vapor weapons than they were actually um, efficient killers. So you could use um, phosgene in combination with mustard, for example, um, to be very unpleasant um, and kill people if they hadn't got masks on. They weren't that, you know good at killing immediately. Now while doing pesticide research, uh, IG Farben, which is a German chemical company that did lots of dodgy things over the years, um, they discovered a pesticide that was just too efficient um, for actual use, as in if a farmer was spraying it on his field he'd be dead almost immediately. Um, so what they did is they weaponized it, and this is what was known as Tabun. So Tabun was incredibly dangerous because it can kill through both skin contact, eye contact and inhaling it. If you inhale it or get it in your eyes, you're probably going to be dead within 10 minutes. If it touches your skin, you're going to be dead in about an hour to two hours um, on a low dose. Obviously, the higher dose, the faster it kills you. Um, so you'd feel lightheaded, nauseous, maybe get diarrhea, things like that. And then eventually, you know, your lungs shut down and you die. Um, nasty stuff. Obviously, like we say, all these chemical weapons are nasty. But what made Tabin so efficient as a weapon was that... It was pretty much colourless, odourless, you know, you couldn't see it. Uh, it's a clear liquid. Apparently, in very high concentrations, it has a slightly fruity smell. But if you can smell that at that point, you're long since doomed. So, it was incredibly efficient, because if you weaponized it, you had a weapon that would be able to defeat guys wearing gas masks or respirators, because it would kill through skin contact. And that's even if they knew it was coming. And, you know, around the time of World War II, most armies didn't have NBC suits. There had been some like very early ones developed for people who might come into contact with mustard gas, but that was about it. So, the Germans basically in 1936 developed a weapon that could defeat any, at the time, you know, like chemical weapon defensive gear. Um, and thankfully Nazi Germany didn't actually, although they weaponized it, they didn't use it. Now there's lots of theories for that and I can't really speculate why it is. I don't believe the one where because Hitler was gassed in World War I, he therefore didn't use it. I think it's far more likely that Germany expected everybody else currently had um, sarin and tab and everything developed as well. So therefore they didn't use it because they were worried that the Allies would retaliate with it. And if you got into World War II and people were putting spray tanks on bombers, uh, flying over your capital cities, spraying the stuff, you'd pretty much wipe out all life in Western Europe, you know, within a few of these bombing raids with it. So, again, tab and was weaponized but not used. Now, later on, the Agent GB was discovered, uh, German Agent B, which was Sarin. Now, Sarin is the really famous one, I don't know why. Um, it's the one that people talk about the most when they talk about chemical weapons, and they don't know too much about chemical weapons. I guess maybe Sarin just sounds cool in name. Um, and Sarin was even deadlier than Tabun. You know, you needed less to inhale, inhale or less to touch your skin to kill you, and I assume it killed slightly faster as well. Near the end of the war, the Germans also came up with Soman, which was uh, more deadly still than Sarin. So it went from Tabin, Tabin, Sarin, Soman, you know, each time getting deadlier with each of the chemical weapons. So that pretty much wraps up this episode on the uh, agents. How do you protect yourselves from them?
well, you kind of can't. You have to know in advance and have full NBC gear on with a respirator to survive. If you don't, um, obviously you're dead. Uh, the problem is with these that if the chemical weapons are used, they touch your skin. You know, you don't, especially if you don't know you've even come into contact with them, because you know, as I was saying, odorless, um, pretty much invisible. Um, it's sprayed in the air, you inhale it, it touches your skin. Within a few minutes, you feel a bit sleepy, dizzy, whatever, you're dead. Um, now, natural chemicals like atropine can be used to um, prevent nerve agent poisoning, from my understanding. I think you have to know you've been exposed to it and then inject yourself before the symptoms get too severe. But again, you have to know you've been exposed, which is the problem. Uh, if it was used as a proper chemical weapons attack, you'd be dead by the time you even knew anything was wrong. Nerve agent is very scary stuff, and this isn't. we're not even getting to the VX levels of um, nerve agents or just the G agents, but... You basically don't have a hope, is what I'm saying. You'd have to know in advance to have your chemical weapons suit on and a respirator at all times if um, any of the nerve agents were going to be used. Have your atropine as well. And then, you know, keep in that NBC gear and hope it's not used. And if it is, you're at least in your NBC gear. The issue is you would not get your suit on in time and your mask on if it was used. You know, by the time your chemical detection paper or your detection kit had found out there was this nerve agent, you wouldn't get your mask and suit on in time, you know, to prevent death. Because it's not that you have to constantly be inhaling it for 10 minutes to then die within 10 minutes. It's not you've inhaled a bit, it, within 10 minutes you will be dead. If that you're still inhaling it, you're going to die even faster. So, yeah, nerve agents, very deadly. The next video we'll talk about um, VX, the Venomous Agent series, developed a bit later on, which, again, make uh, Tabin and all those other ones look like child's play. But, no. Tabin and Saren and Soman, the G-Agents, are very, very deadly. Um, as I said, you'd have to have an NBC suit on and a respirator to protect yourself, and if you've been exposed, use, like, an antropine syringe... Um, you know, within good time, but the thing is, you wouldn't know, this is the problem. If it was used as a weapon, you'd be dead before you know you'd been gassed. So, there we go. That's the G-Agents, very, very nasty, as I say in all these videos, but they're only kind of getting worse as we go along. So, yeah, if the G-Agents were used against you, I don't think you'd have much hope of survival.